Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Pink Skin Addicts. Back again here with another video. So, you guys see the title, you see the thumbnail. Let's jump right into it. Tom Telesco, uh, I think he has pretty much ran his course as Chargers GM. Now, his contract is up for renewal at the end of the season. Um, and I think, I think, I have a hunch that the Chargers are going to move in a different direction. And it honestly would be the right decision. Um, Tom Telesco has had 10 years, 10 years to really get this team um, to the point where they are perennial, you know, contenders, right? And not necessarily Super Bowl contenders, but perennial contenders in the AFC West, right? You at least want to win your division. Um, that should be the goal of every NFL team, right? Some teams have Super Bowl aspirations, but your goal should try to be winning your division for every single team, right? Some teams it's achievable, some teams it's not. I get it, but that should be the goal. Number one, let's win the division first and then other things will, you know, fall in line from there. But Tom Telesco has not won a division. And to me, before I get into any of the, the stats and all that stuff, that is the most uh, glaring indictment on Tom Telesco is that he has been in place for 10 years. The Chargers have not won a division title. And to me, that says a lot. It really does say a lot. Um, it says a lot for this team that the Chargers have now. Um, but it also says a lot as far as history has has went on. The Chargers have had franchise quarterbacks, Phillip Rivers and Justin Herbert. Uh, so there's really no excuse to not put good enough teams around them. Um, you know, there is a bunch of excuses that can come up, a bunch of, bunch of excuses that can be made. But finding the quarterback position is half the battle. And once you found that guy, it really takes a lot of pressure off of you. You just have to surround him with guys that are going to contribute, guys that are going to be, you know, positives and not negatives. And Tom Telesco has not done a good job of that. So I wanted to get into some of the numbers here and kind of support my argument as to why I think the Chargers should move on to, from Tom Telesco. So number one, obviously been here 10 years, right? He's been the, the, the GM for 10 years. The Chargers in that time span have only had two playoff appearances. Um, to me, that's not good enough. Both of those playoff appearances have been via the wild card. Uh, again, no division titles. So that is something that has to be taken into account over the span of 10 years, right? This is 10 years is enough time for two rebuilds, right? Rebuilds normally take four to five years in the NFL if you're doing a full complete rebuild. Tom Telesco has been here for 10 years, right? He's been here the, the lifespan of two full rebuilds and no division titles. You really can't argue that, you know, there's no other points that I can make um, that support any any anything more than that. No division titles in 10 years. Um, definitely, definitely an indictment on Tom Telesco. Now the coaches that Tom Telesco has picked, um, him being the GM, right? He has a very, very heavy voice in who the Chargers hire as head coach, right? Now, obviously the owners, they have final say on the, the matter, but Tom Telesco, his staff, they are the ones doing the interviews. They are the ones, you know, gauging interest from other coaches, right? They're the ones pretty much writing the, the coaching carousel. So they are the ones finding these coaches. Now, under Tom Telesco, the first hire, Mike McCoy, we know what that is, right? We don't even have to go over that. Anthony Lynn, right? Anthony Lynn was, I, I think he could have been better with better uh, personnel, but even still, right? He was inexperienced as an NFL head coach um, and things did not work out, you know, the way that he or Charger fans hoped that it will work out. Um, and now we have Brandon Staley. Things are, you know, quickly going downhill with him. Um, so, I mean, the, the, the Chargers are really in a position right now where I don't think I don't think a full rebuild is is on the table, but a partial rebuild, cleaning house, um, you know, especially in the the, the football operations um, part of the franchise is on the table now. If the Chargers don't make the playoffs, but again, Tom Telesco has not he's not picked the uh, you know the head coaches um, wisely, and this is something that the Chargers are suffering for now. As far as drafts go, Tom Telesco has been okay with the drafts. Um, you know, but as I broke it down and as I was doing research for this video, you know, I, I kind of I am guilty of it. I give too much credit to Tom Telesco for drafting these these talented players that we have now. Um, I mean, some of these guys are can't miss prospects. Um, Justin Herbert was there, right? He was going to get drafted soon if the Chargers didn't draft him. Same thing with Joey Bosa. Same thing with Derwin James. Um, you know, the, a lot of these guys are can't miss prospects. Uh, Mike Williams was a first round pick as well. I do give Tom Telesco credit for drafting Keenan Allen. 
Keenan Allen was a third round pick. Um, he was a guy that was slept on out of college. He was not touted very highly. Um, I remember watching him a lot at Cal, but I do give Tom Telesco credit for that. Um, you know, he's seen something in Keenan Allen, and obviously he has been one of the best players that the Chargers have had in the past, you know, 15, 20 years. So I do give him credit for that. But, you know, you also have to look at some of the big busts that Tom Telesco has drafted as well to Jerry Tillery, obviously, right? The most recent one that we can see. Um, you're looking at a Corey Legit, you know, you're looking at a Larry English, you know, you're looking at guys who were drafted pretty highly by the Chargers, right? Um, had a bunch of lofty expectations, did not live up to billing though. Uh, so you have to you have to take into account what Tom Telesco has done there um, and his lack of drafting depth. And I think that is, to me, the most important thing, right? You can draft your stars, you can have your quarterback, but you have to build a team out around them. Um, you cannot just rely on your quarterbacks. You can't just rely on your stars. They have to have support. They have to have support from other guys, right? You don't need to draft. Everybody doesn't need to be a star. Everybody doesn't need to be a pro bowler. But you have to draft guys that are going to contribute, right? You have to get draft guys that are good enough to be on a team. You have to draft guys, to me, and in my opinion, you have to draft guys good enough that other teams want them when they come up in free agency. If you're not doing that, if you draft guys who other teams don't want, then, you know, you're pretty much wasting draft picks. And you're wasting, you know, your prime, your quarterback's prime. You're wasting your Super Bowl window. You're wasting all of that. All of that goes to waste when you are not maximizing um, your draft capital, when you're not maximizing your draft picks, right? You have to put guys around these quarterbacks. Drafting is so important. You know, free agency is one thing, but drafting is so important because you can get good players, right? You can get them all for good, good, cheap prices, right? Everybody is slotted, right? From, from first round to the seventh round, everybody is slotted. You know what these guys are going to make there's really no negotiation so you can draft really really good players and you can have them really really on on budget prices for the next at least four years right first round pick all the way down to seven round pick so if you're not maximizing that part of your franchise then you're you're not going to be in a position where you're going to be winning a lot and you know i think that's what the chargers are now you know aside from the good draft picks, the ones that I mentioned already, Herbert, Derwin James, Bosa, all these guys. Aside from that, there really hasn't been guys who have been there contributing year in and year out, right? There really hasn't been that. And I think, you know, going forward, right, if Tom Telesco is not in office, whoever takes over for him is going to have to maximize the draft. It's a very, very important part of the NFL. It's a, a very important part of winning. It's a very important part of having a successful franchise, being able to hit in the draft every single season. Now, to me, the, the second biggest indictment on Tom Telesco as a GM is his record, right? What has his record been the, the, the 10 years that he's been um, GMing for the Chargers, right? So before this season, before this season, his record uh, stood at 69 and 76, right? So if you add in our five and five now, it is now uh, 74 and 81, right? This is below 500. Um, I've seen a lot of people describe Tom Telesco as mediocre. Uh, these numbers tell a different story. The definition of mediocre is average, right? This is not average. This is below average. Um, and you have had, again, franchise quarterbacks, right? Phillip Rivers, Justin Herbert, transition right from one to the other, right? So you have had quarterbacks who have, you know, been good. There's really no excuse to not put teams around them. There's no excuse to not hire a good coach. Um, there's really no excuse for any of this. Tom Telesco has been below average, right? 74 and 81. That This is his record as of right now. And if the Chargers don't write things out for this 2022 season, he is going to finish this season, you know, with a below 500 record as the Chargers GM over 10 years. It's not a good thing and it's not going to follow him uh very well right if he wants to get another job somewhere else people are going to look at that why weren't you able to put this together there really is no excuse really is no excuse the chargers have what they need um i get that the ownership is cheap sometime but being able to maximize your draft picks again being able to maximize who you sign in free agency who you prioritize in free agency all of that makes a big big difference right you're going to strike out on free agents. You're going to strike out on draft picks. We already know this. But to have a 10-year span and to really not put anything solid together, the, the excuses are ran out for me. And to me, I think Tom Telesco should go. His contract shouldn't be renewed. The Chargers don't have to fire him. They don't you know, need to pay him any more money or whatever. His contract is up. Just don't renew it. Move on and look for a different GM. Now, in that process of looking for a new GM, who should the Chargers target, right? 
this is the question who should they target it's easy to get rid of one guy but who's going to take his place right say this is the same thing that could be said with coaches and uh even some players you know for some certain positions who should take his place right and i mentioned this in the live stream that i did yesterday the person that should take his place none other than mr will mcclay will mcclay is vice president of player personnel for the dallas cowboys if you are not familiar with him will mcclay has been with the dallas cowboys organization i believe since 2010 um but he took over drafting he took over drafting and uh you know he pretty much took over the scouting department i think in 2014 so all the draft picks from 2014 all the way into now uh will mcclay can take credit for so when you look at a gm when you look at a guy who you are you know potentially targeting to take tom telesco's spot will mcclay to me has the most credible resume for anybody out there uh you know there are some other gms or some other scouts that do some 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 really good work for other teams but just the volume the volume of players that will mcclay has been able to get for the cowboys um it's just been ridiculous it's been absolutely ridiculous now i mentioned this in the live stream that i did uh yesterday as well too will mcclay i think he can be snatched i honestly think he can be snatched as as good of a job as he's done for the cowboys vice president of player personnel is the highest that he will ever achieve in that organization the cowboys are a family organization jerry jones obviously owns the cowboys and he will pass that down to his children you know the second that he leaves this earth his children will own the cowboys they will pass it down to their children they control everything they have controlling interest in everything that goes on in that cowboys franchise so the title of gm uh the title title of of president of football operations anything like that will not be going to will mcclay he only has so much power in this franchise but he does a damn good job at what he does again he started drafting in 2014 for the cowboys this is when the cowboys really started to stockpile a lot of talent now will mcclay does not he does not have any say as far as coaches go that's completely a jerry jones thing he has the final say on who coaches are uh you know offensive coordinators defensive court he has jerry jones has the final say will mcclay has no say in this so when you look at these players and i'm going to name some of these players off in a minute but when you look at them i want you to look at them through the lens of just their talent right their talent them being in college or whatever them being scouted by the cowboys and look at their production right Obviously, we know the Cowboys have underachieved for many, many seasons. But when you look at it from an objective standpoint, a lot of these guys, a lot of this great talent went to Jason Garrett, right? Jason Garrett obviously did not maximize the talent on the Cowboys team when he was head coach. So a lot of these guys went straight to Jason Garrett. Some of them had really good seasons. Some of them kind of fell off a little bit as far as production. But these guys were not playing for a, a premium head coach. Um, and the guys that are still in this roster, on the, still on this Cowboy roster, are not playing for a premium head coach now either so again jerry jones he has final say in the matter of who gets hired as coach offensive coordinator all that other stuff he hired mike mccarthy uh after he had a sleepover with him that's how he hired mike mccarthy they had a sleepover they talked they cried they got emotional and that's how he made the hire with mike mccarthy so jerry jones is not looking at this from a, 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 a x and o standpoint he's very emotional when he makes these decisions so when you look at these players i want you to look at just their talent just look at what they can do on the football field, right? Just look at what they can do because obviously they have not played for premium coaching. So let me go down the list. Some of the notable draft picks that Will McClay has drafted since he took over full time in 2014 for the Cowboys, right? Zach Martin, we already know who he is, right? Perennial pro bowler, perennial all pro, uh, probably going to be a Hall of Famer. Demarcus Lawrence, very good defensive end. You look at a Byron Jones, the corner, you know, he ended up signing with the Miami Dolphins after his stint. Uh, with the Cowboys but again another good piece of talent there Randy Gregory Randy Gregory you know he had some problems and, and all of that stuff but again another good talented guy obviously you look at Ezekiel Elliott you know what he is Dak Prescott the Cowboys were able to get their franchise quarterback in the fourth round and were able to try to maximize talent around him for four years before they had to pay him so again that is another another check mark for Will McClay um you look at an anthony brown right these are depth pieces that i'm going into now right anthony brown still on the team still makes plays for the cowboys same thing with malik collins right makes plays for the cowboys well when you look at a uh, taco charlton right 
I believe 2017. He came out of Michigan. He was their first round pick. He was a bust, right? This is not an exact science. You're going to get bust every now and then. So not a big deal, right? But I want to be fair and, 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 you know, I don't want to just point out his greatest hits, but there are some busts on, on this list. They're not, not very many, but there are some busts and I do want to point it out. I do want to be fair. Um, you look at a guy right now, uh, Chidobe Awuzie. This is a guy, I think he's injured right now, but he plays for the Bengals. Very, very good, very sound cornerback. He was drafted by the Cowboys. Um, he obviously left in free agency, but he's very, very good. Before he got injured, he's playing top five corner in the league, I, I, I would say. Very, very good. Um, you look at a Leighton Van Der Esch, still on the team, still making plays. Connor Williams, still on the team, still making plays. Michael Gallup, still on the team, still making plays. Dal uh, Dalton Schultz, still on the team, making plays. You go to, all the way down the list. Tony Pollard, right? A guy that's going to get paid a lot this offseason. He's been fantastic. Explosive running back. Big weapon out of the backfield for the Cowboys. We, we know what he is. If you watch football, you know who he is. Connor McGovern, offensive lineman, right? Really, really good for them. Um, C.D. Lamb, right? Very, very talented wide receiver. We know what he is. Trayvon Diggs, all-pro corner last year. A bunch of interceptions. Playing really well this season, right? I, I kind of got on him a little bit for the, the, the stuff that he would do last year, but he's playing much better this season. Again, this is a guy Will McClay drafted. Uh, Navelle Gallimore, uh, he's the uh, defensive lineman. I, I think he plays their their uh, zero technique, their zero one technique, whatever they want to run. Again, another depth piece, another guy that can contribute. Um, you look at Tyler Smith, they just drafted him this year. And then you go to a guy, last but not least, Michael Parsons, right? Michael Parsons, all pro last year, going to be all pro again this year. Um, these guys were drafted, they were scouted by Will McClay. This is talent that is on this roster, right? Now, again, he has nothing to do with head coaching and all of that stuff. Coaching in general, he has nothing to do with that. But he goes out and he gets talent. This is talent that you can win with, right? If you have the, the right head coach, you have the right offensive coordinator, you have the right defensive coordinator, you have the right philosophy, you can win with all these guys on this roster, right? Except for just a few busts, right? They're, they're not either not in the league anymore or they're on practice squads or whatever, but it happens to everybody. Every single team drafts a bus at some point or another. But most of these guys that I named, you can win with. You can definitely win with. And the Cowboys should have at least, at least been in a couple NFC championship games if they had better coaching, if they had better leadership, but they don't. Again, he has nothing to do with that. But Will McClay is a guy that can get talent. He can scout talent. And a lot of these guys that I just named were not first round picks. A lot of them were not first round picks. Some of these guys, second, third, fourth rounds, right? All the way up to fifth rounders. A lot of these guys were not first round picks. So this is depth. This is what the Chargers don't do well. Will McClay can automatically fix that. And he has the eye for talent. He has the eye for talent. He goes out, he scouts, he knows exactly what he's looking for. And I think the biggest thing with Will McClay, he understands this modern day NFL. He understands how you have to win. He understands the past happy league, but he also understands what it means, right? To bring big guys around, to draft really good offensive linemen, and to make sure that you are stout up front. Make sure you have enough guys that are stout up front on both sides of the ball. Offensive line, defensive line. That's the number one thing that I think is very attractive to me when it comes to Will McClay and him being the possible GM for the Chargers. Again, I think he is, I think he's ripe for the taking, honestly. To have that GM by his name, right? It, he will he will never have that with the Cowboys. To have that GM and to probably have a significant pay raise as well, too. For him to be able to put this much talent on a team, you know, with 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 Jason Garrett and Jerry Jones and all that stuff for him to be able to do that for him to be able to do that and for him to be su as successful as he is doing it I think he can bring this to the Chargers and I honestly think it would be a very very good thing um, I think the talent just in the draft alone right not even counting free agency but the talent alone in the draft will raise the stock of this team right will raise the stock of this team there's going to be enough talent on both sides of the ball so when injuries come around we're not in panic mode like we were this season I think Will McClay is the guy. I honestly do think Will McClay is the guy. But that is all I got for this video, guys. Thank you so much for all the support. I really, really appreciate it. Shout out to all my new subscribers. Really appreciate you guys. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. Um, and don't forget to hit the like button on the way out as well, too. Um, I'll be back again tomorrow with more content. Uh, but until next time, thank you guys so much.